So this is the second video in a series of long-form interviews with Devox on their new album Telegraph. In this video we talk about going from their early performances through to this concept album Telegraph, which is out now. So the first video we filmed was just effectively about the origins of Devox and this kind of almost 70 years of studio practice and music craft between the pair of you leading to Devox. Um, that will link in the description for anyone that's not following these in order. Um, but we've effectively got to your first kind of Devox gig, if you like. Not the first performance, but we've got to Superbooth 17 where the kind of sound of Devox really formed. and actually where I first experienced your work at that performance. So I'd like to talk about from that performance up to the album, effectively. You, you did say in the last video that the album wasn't necessarily on the cards to start with, in terms of the kind of modular journey, it wasn't the initial goal in any way. Performance wasn't even the initial goal, it's all just kind of no. organically happened. Yeah, I mean, it all happened quite free, didn't it? I mean, yeah. I, you know, as you said, I think we, we started thinking about it after that mm. Superbooth gig, because I think it was after that show that we sort of felt that, you know, we had a... Um, this should be uh, documented and recorded. Yeah, it was just... Yeah. Uh, it just seemed to be in, important that... The, because we're going through such a, uh, a journey as well, musically, and kind of developing the, the systems and so on, it meant that... I think we we kind of thought about maybe releasing like an EP or just do like actually, a live release. That's absolutely true. The, the, um, I think the first intention was an EP, yeah, and okay. uh, uh, that that was what we were we were looking at initially, wasn't it? Yeah, was the idea of an EP. Um, yeah, um, and and, what, and I, I, there was. I mean, there's part of that Super Booth Seventeen gig is actually captured on the album with uh, mm. and, and the title track of the album Telegraph. Is the um, uh, was one of the tracks that we performed at mm. Superbooth, and, and Skalka was the other one, which is the penultimate track on the album. So, uh, and I think it's you know we called the album Telegraph because it, it felt like such a sort of definitive moment for yeah. us. Um, and um, and when we got back from, uh, we decided that we were going to record the patches that we had mm. in the suitcases. So when when we got back from Superbooth, before we ripped the patches out. Um, we decided to record them, so we set up at my place um, one afternoon and straight and, to stereo, and we just went straight to stereo with them. Yeah, um, and we got some content like that, but we also went separately with Telegraph. Uh, we 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 we, uh, we did lay down individual bits from it as well, but it was all coming from that patch. So yeah. everything, it, you know, it was just a case of kind of let's capture, you know, what we did there. Um, so it was quite a while ago, you know, it was nearly yeah. two years, two years yeah. ago that we started the album because it was it was recording those two patches from Superbooth that mm. started that album off. But at the time, I think we were thinking about it as an EP. Yeah. We weren't yeah. necessarily thinking of an album then. There's a consistency to it as well, though. It might, you know, that might have been nearly two years ago, that performance. But I think that that probably speaks to your backgrounds more than anything. With your intentions going in, your experience leading up to this point, which is what we covered in the previous video, mm. I think that's where that consistency will have come from. It's not a new musical project that you're, not to talk anyone down that is kind of d doing it this way, but fumbling through it, learning as you mm. go, that there's the kind of incredible wealth of knowledge going into There's this. intention, yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, th there, is, um, there is intention. So... Um, you know, we felt that we'd 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 achieved something. I think everything we'd performed up until that point, we hadn't even thought about, about capturing it or recording it. In fact, mm -hmm. it's lovely when you pull a patch out. It's a great feeling. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's liberating. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> feeling of just kind of it's gone. Let it go. Yeah. And but with that, we didn't, and we kind of knew something told us we had to. We yeah, should record this. this. And um, yeah, so I th so there was a clear intention with that, and so that's when I think we started to find mm -hmm. ourselves as artists, as Devox, as, as to what that yeah. was, and so. Um, uh, and, and, and I think every, that did certainly change the way we approached all our other performances and how we patched, because mm. we, we, we then, you know, you loved that thing I did with the dink, with Dinkies. With Dinky Psycho, yeah. On, uh, 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 on um, this is a little 12-bit, I'm sure most people yeah. know, some people know, yeah. Dinkies is a little 12-bit drum um, yeah. module, percussion module. Yeah, and then the really sweeps crunchy. from cubic chord and so on. We had a few yeah. little signature sounds that started to creep into our patches that... Uh, as you said, kind of, it helped to solidify our our sound, and and also I think we got to the point after we thought about the the idea of doing the the live EP, and we I'm almost still thinking right, this is a live act, and this is like a documentation of our live performance. But then we thought we felt we needed to create something more substantial, something that was a real body of work rather than two, three, or four tracks. So, and that led to the idea of right, okay, let's do an album, let's do. We didn't have any 
particular. There was a bit of a concept of, brewing as well. Yes. I think one of your questions was, you know, where, how do you, yeah, where, it's from yeah. performance to, to, to concept, to concept album. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And the concept really, um, uh, the, I think there are a number of things that work, a number of things that work. One of them is Nino's always, before D Box, was always naming tracks after metro stations yeah. for some reason. Train station, metro station. He's a strange boy. Around. And so, um, and I, I actually loved that idea when he told me that he was doing that. I said, well, really? That's really cool. With instrumental electronic music, there's no lyrics. There's how do you name tracks, you know? And okay, you could wait for inspiration, but it just seemed like it was relatively um, kind of abstract, but sort of interesting. It was just, and it was like a nice little system. It's like, right, okay. So that's been a system for, that's years, for years, anyway. Year, since, mm. for, since 1996, I started doing that. So, <laughs> which I thought was brilliant. So, um, and, and, I, and the whole thing with Modular yeah. is a very transient it's, yeah. sort, sort of kind of experience, isn't it? it, it, it it's never fixed in one place. And, 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 and I mean, that's the beauty of it. You, you, yeah. you, um, every time you perform a, a, a patch live, mm. Um, uh, it's uh, it's different. Uh, it's a yeah. variation, and in, in some ways, it's like a band playing a track live. It's never quite the yeah. same. Mm -hmm. So it's depending on how everybody's feeling that day. It might be faster, might be slower. It might have different new sections introduced. Um, in fact, we're discovering a whole new world at the moment because we're going to be performing shortly tracks from the album, and that's yeah. quite a new thing. Opposite, first time we've done it the other way around. So, yeah. And that's well, we're learning that at the yeah. moment, and it's, it's it's quite interesting. So going back to things that we did two years ago and trying to recreate them in a new way. So, mm. um, so that was the concept. Was this idea of trying to capture this very transient world that mod the new modular is you know uh, the fact that nothing's ever really in a, in a permanent state and although the album is a recorded physical artifact that is fixed in time um, it, it, the I think the content is is, is, is very is, is, there's a lot of fluidity there mm. you it, it, tr it, it really feels like it starts in one place it evolves and mm. it morphs into something else and and that is the beauty of modular, and hopefully that's what we've we've managed to capture with the album is that sense of kind of movement, um, uh, which is is so important, so critical. I mean, even mm. the people working with modular years ago, Susan Charney you know, always talks mm. about the sort of the way modular her music uh, with the Bookler system sort of moves around. I don't think she'll perform unless it's in surround. Um, mm. And yeah, I think listening to the quality, stereo yeah. artifacts is a bit of a you know a compromise for her really, and mm. uh, and I can understand that. It does. It. it, it it, it speaks of sort of movement. So the idea of having these seemingly abstract, random metro stations from around the world linked mm. by this music, mm. so uh, seemingly impossible connections are being made, and yeah. that is again another lovely analogy for, for, for a modular system. You're making it sometimes what seem like impossible connections, but then they manifest in this beautiful sound, we hope. Mm. Um, and so that's really the core of, 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 the, uh, of, mm. of the concept, this idea of transients, this idea of making connections uh, in the abstract. Um, and, uh, and of course, that represents what new modular uh, music and performance and creativity is, I mm. think, for a lot of people. Yeah, I think the, the idea of the kind of new modular, as you called it, the, the development of Yoro Rack and digital being in there and effects yeah. and all, all the DSP developments that we've seen that Susan Chani didn't have access to. Mm. That kind of real, pure, original modular in quad is obviously still fascinating. Yeah. It's an amazing experience. But for you to work down into stereo, I think the effects and the format as it is now does allow that sense of 3D yes. space. Yeah. You, you can have and you can hear it through, through the album. There's, there's short reverbs that are really quite dense and in your face. There's deeper reverbs, there's textures in the background. It does still play with this kind of fluid Absolutely. 3D space. Yeah. And that's what really yeah. spoke to me from a kind of technical standpoint, yeah. not just the synthesis of the sounds and obviously the musical content as well, but there is this idea just of space and, and layers and movement and things that come to the fore and the back and well, that's reassuring because yeah. that's I mean that's exactly what we're we're, we're trying to achieve with it and mm -hmm. and you know you got I mean herb verb got to mention herb yeah. verb I mean it's we were talking about this you know before we started filming you know it's 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 such a, a crucial it's almost like an instrument the module yeah. itself and um, uh, that is there's so much movement going on I mean I've been working with reverbs and digital reverbs analog reverbs spring reverbs um, for years. Mm -hmm. But I'd never come across anything like herb verb when I when I when I when I discovered it, and the, you know, moving sort of you know yeah. the, the mo moving all of the various parameters around, and, and you know, and, and, and uh, it's a wonderful thing yeah. um, uh, when you start playing with decay time and well, modulating that, it mm -hmm. becomes so lyrical. And I mean, on you know, on a couple of tracks, I mean, uh, I think AO2, you know, there's some glorious moments in mm -hmm. that where where the herb verb is, is it's just singing away, and it's yeah. it's, it's quite it's, it's quite magical. And it's something it's it does become its own instrument at points. I mean, something we used to do in the haven't done it for 
a couple of times because you don't want to do this too, stuff too much, but for the end of uh, a live set, trying to, how do you show the audience that you've finished? Yeah. Because if it's, you know, if you're playing live instruments, it's easy. Like, how do we do this? And so, because if you turn the decay up all the way on herb, it starts to feed back on itself and it yeah. builds and builds and builds. So we kind of got this kind of wall of sound and then just pull the outputs out of the mixer. And that was the visual cue to people to say that, right, we're done. And it mm. was, um, but... We don't do it anymore. We don't do it anymore, <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've done it too many times now. And I've seen it's it's like the Sonic Youth it, thing. You know? I think a lot of people do it now, so... It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Sonic Youth, I think I saw them do it first. That's probably where I got the idea okay. from, you know. Um, but it was... Uh, smash up our modulars. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps not. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but obviously th those kind of modules, almost, as you say, it's um, the certain modules on their own don't necessarily have a huge amount of, of, of life, but suddenly when you make that connection between the two of them, that's, and it creates that, that sort of that interplay just in between. Yeah. And, you're, and you're sort of, you're curating this this network that happens yeah. in these connections and you're kind of you're guiding There's it. There's an internal conversation yeah. that you're kind of the puppet master of yeah. to a degree. Of the um, gardener, you know, kind of training it up a trellis. Or the ringmaster. The ringmaster, there you go. Yeah. Gardener, ringmaster, cook. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of the, the just visions of you smashing up your modulars. <laughs> and it, and the point to make is that they're in the background there but we've got images we can overlay as well they are your systems they're the systems that from that performance i'm sure they've changed a little bit in, in terms of modules bit, used but, but really, yeah. that that is that effectively you know the arch of this video from that super booth 2017 performance to the album mm. there's i don't think they've changed that much that is your system there's no yeah. big bookshelf mm. at home there's no no second case that's your instrument yeah and I, I, that's it it's an instrument yeah. and yeah, I mean, we, they haven't changed much, have no. they? They've, they've and we've been careful. To, I mean, we had these custom cases built, 12U, 104 HP. Uh, a guy we met at Schneider's in um, Berlin, as it was back in 2017. Just someone happened 17, to be in the shop when we yeah. were in there looking at modules, and he said... Yeah, um, 2016. He was, selling, yeah. I think he was talking to them about, about his cases, and yeah. it was a, he was great, yeah. Um, and um, His name escapes me now. Ian. Ian. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, and um, yeah, they, they haven't changed though much, Ben. They're they're pretty much. I mean, yeah. a couple of the voices have changed. Um, the, 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 the significant one was the uh, Instruo CSL. Um, we got the first couple of those off um, Jason. Jason, because yeah. we were blown away with them yeah, last year. Amazing, at food, amazing. And we yeah. were looking for complex oscillators, yeah. so they they got changed out. And you know, the uh, ER301s went in both systems as well. I mean, and that's a really a nice way of keeping stopping modular creep. Mm. I think there is yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, it you can keep developing to, the three hundred one. You can, yeah, and and so you don't need to then start, uh, you know, building other racks and stuff. I am quite keen, you know, uh, uh, to keep the one box. I like mm. this idea that it's my instrument. And it's, yes. it is this one yeah. with this one thing. Keeping that limitation. However, as we were saying earlier, mm. it's get, it does get frustrating sometimes when, like at the moment, we've got patches under construction for the next set of shows, and so you don't want to. Um, it kind of means you can't get in there and and um, uh, and sort of do much because you know you're very carefully setting a set yeah. uh, up, which well, takes it's, a few it's weeks. Dismantling and creating a new mm. instrument. To, to speak of it that way, it is. Yeah. You don't want to pull the instrument to bits to have to rebuild it. Again. So there might yeah. be what I'm saying is we might <laughs> yeah, actually you might have, have to get a little small <laughs> skiff going so yeah. for you know so I can noodle away um, you know with, yeah. with an experiment with other things. But I think that again. It, 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 that's where some of the consistency in the album comes from, I think, because we're not looking at a, a, a pair of people that have just swapped modules out endlessly over that period of time. Mm. No, not at you all. You know, if you'd yeah. looked at... I mean, I make demo videos, so my, the purposes of my cases are very different, but if I'd recorded a piece every two months for two years, it'd be yeah. drastically different. It, yeah. Wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't pull as a collection. Mm. It'd almost be a compilation of... It stops you also <laughs> forming myself. habits, yeah. doesn't it? Yes. Well. Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, I know yeah. we spoke earlier about, you know, that's not necessarily a good thing if you start forming habits, but um, it's allowed us, I think, to come up with a sound mm. and, and, and a theme and for this album. And um, yes, I think you're right. I mean, I, I, they haven't changed much in the, in, the, in the two years. And I see, you know, I, I see other people's systems change dramatically quite mm. a lot. And uh, and I think maybe I should be changing my system. You know, am I? You I know, think that works around a release or a concept or a group of performances. You know, Devox album number two, three, four in the future, whatever that may bring, may have very different. 
things, of but course, I think yeah. to lead it to to the album and then the performances beforehand, the performances that will come afterwards, as we said, trying to now perform recorded music live, mm. it's it needs that consistency. Yeah, I think it does. I think it gives... You know, if your system was totally different and it, yeah. it wasn't in a separate case where you could pull the old one out, yeah. how mm. would you then perform Absolutely. some yeah. of this work in a few years' Absolutely. time? What you see, you know, when you see Devox, if you saw Devox live a couple of years ago or you saw us a year ago live or you see us sometime this year and you listen to the album, you're getting the same mm. thing. It's, it's, yeah. it's that, that is what we're creating at the moment as artists with, with the Devox project. And yes, you're absolutely right. I think once this album... The Telegraph has run its course in terms of you know doing what we we, we hoped it would do. Um, then then yes, we may make a fundamental change yeah. to the systems okay. at that at that point. But I actually feel that there's so much I still want to yeah. explore within yeah. the systems that we've got that I just feel like I've hardly scratched the surface. I feel like at ten percent. It's like yeah, ten percent yeah. of our brain. Really I feel like only frustrating system. Uh, uh, at, at, at times. Um, but this album had other, you know, the, I think one of the other intentions that we had with it was to capture um, really what, you know, a moment in time and a quite, mm. f you know, over the years I've been involved in, uh, we were uh, I think we were talking about earlier, I mean, I've been, been involved in a number of different projects um, and some of them, and it, there are times when you're involved with music, a certain type of music where you feel that it's important or there is um, yeah. there is something going on that's not happened before. I mean, certainly yeah. when I was doing sort of acid house and dance music and uh, back in the uh, uh, late 80s, early 90s and I was part of that scene, there was a sort of feeling like, you know, I was involved in new stuff. I mean, yeah. that's always exciting. Mm -hmm. And I... and. I guess I've just got into sort of the industry of making records for the last 30 years and you sort of forget about that. And then there's, you know, there's some, some interesting um, non-Western, you know, people might call world music projects that I was involved with, which felt like they had real significance. And very quickly, as Devox evolved, you know, and I, you, you, you see the subculture that is new modular, and it's yeah. fascinating. There's so many different yeah. characters making interesting types of music with their modulars. It's really interesting. Um, you know, we, nobody, they, 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 you know, we don't sound the same as, I don't know, R. Benny or, um, uh, or, or Rich or Design. Or, you know, yes, the, yeah. everybody's yeah. different, everybody's yeah. got their own identity. Yeah. And yeah. That Even though we may all have the same modules. Yeah. But we yeah, all but as, them differently. But as creators, we so, mean that the outputs are very different. Obviously, you know, we wanted to make a, a, record, a, a, a record of what we were doing and what mm. we felt we are part of. And yeah. um, uh, that's, um, that becomes a, a motivating factor, mm. I think, it, that, you know, do you know what this is? This is interesting. I, I, whatever. I don't know where modular is going. Who cares? But it's. But you, you yeah, kind of think but we're that documenting this it's kind of, moment. Yeah, I think you're right. There is a collection of work across some of the artists you've mentioned, and we could kind of go on near endlessly yeah. mentioning mm. different people putting out modular content. But there are these key pieces of work coming out that I think are documenting something that we don't know where it's going. Yeah. Mm. They're, they're still that's the whole, exciting yeah yeah there's yeah, still sorry. this just journey of kind of a new modular i really do like that term this new modular kind of movement going and there's these kind of much like between all these un unlinked stations of the album there's these stations that are being hit at different points and it's going to end up as a kind of big mind map at some point of mm. yeah. <laughs> you know styles being <laughs> yeah because yeah. you know you say richard divine our benny were two artists you mentioned yeah you can't really draw many parallel lines between this and, and them are between Austin, our Benny and, and Richard. Mm. But those spaces will get kind of filled almost, I feel. Not to yeah. say anyone's going to come along and do a, a, a Devox copy or a, I just want to be Richard yeah. Divine clone, but the, like inspiration. the map of things yeah. that are happening with modules kind of constantly it's inevitable. growing and it's starting it to link. It's, it's like and, a tube map. You know, yeah. when you get this, different yeah. genres and artists and they get those yeah. crossover it, points. It is starting to kind of form yeah, mm. I, I think thing. it's easy. You can yeah. sort of see, you know, I think Austin and uh, Arbeni and um, uh, uh, has a sort of, uh, uh, and light bath, you know, there is a sort of ambient and Annie and people like that. You mm. have that sort of very lovely textual, generative, semi-generative mm. kind of stuff going mm. on, which is wonderful. And um, you have Ebsidic, you know, doing a sort of, you know, kind of yeah, banging techno. techno. And, and I mean, it's incredible what he does with a modular. It's, it, I mean, you know, we, I actually saw him perform live quite early on mm. um, in Brighton a few yes. years ago, yeah. when we first, not long after we got into that. Yeah, into maybe 2016, I think, probably yeah. the same. And I was, was blown away, I couldn't believe, you know, that you could do that with a modular. It was, it was incredible. Yeah. So there are, you know, people, you know, working in different kind of areas, mm. But what, you know, techno, um, 
so Colin Benders or um, techno on a mod yeah, doesn't sound yeah. like kind of techno from a laptop. No, it's, it has no. its own, own kind yeah. of kind of sound, you know, and, and the kind of textural sort of ambient stuff that it, uh, yeah, that um, uh, Ar Benny and, and Lightbath and people like that are doing is is really um, uh, again that, that doesn't really exist outside of that 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 domain, the mod new modular domain, no. quite like that. And I think what, you know some people will draw comparisons with sort of uh, Berlin School with what we do, and I think mm. there's certainly a foot in that. Yeah, but it's sort of move, moving moving it forward. Forward. So, uh, you know, we are clearly trying to, uh, I guess this takes us on to why we, we ended up signing with, with, with uh, Ian at DIN. Um, we, I think, that, you know, there's, de there's definitely musical influences that work with us uh, that, are separate, that are very different to those artists. Mm. Um, uh, but it feels like it needs to be told. That story needs to be told through yeah. Modular and we you know, need to do that with D-Box. <laughs> 